We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's question comes from one of our Patreon patrons, Math Guy Dave, who asks, what are your thoughts on using a tile laying game to start an RPG? Would Land vs. Sea work for this? Oh, thanks so much for the question, Math Guy Dave, and of course for supporting us on Patreon, which you can also do at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. Um, I got to say, this came up on our personal Discord channel, which everyone who joins our Patreon gets access to, and I thought it was fascinating. I thought it was a really cool idea. So at the time, we were talking about our Land vs. Sea review, which is an awesome board game from Good Games Publishing, two to four player tile laying game, where you're basically building a map. And your tiles are made up of either half, well, land and sea in different, either one, one fifth to two, two fifth, I don't even know, one fifth to four fifths of one category and the other, whatever. There's, there's divided up into land. Of land and sea. Yes. <laughs> a mix of land and sea. They're hex tiles. And like, there's always, there's no tile that's all land, all sea. Well, there is. Never mind. Watch our review for land versus sea. They're Read tiles. our review on the blog. They're hexes. They have land and see on them yes and the entire game is about playing these where the land player gets points for placing land or completing land sections and the sea player gets points for cleaning sea sections with lots of other bonus points um that part doesn't really matter what matters is when you finish this game you end up with a really cool looking map and honestly to answer straight up dave's question i don't see why not i don't see why you couldn't play a game of land versus sea and that become your world. And I actually think if you that'd be an awesome world building uh, like thing, it's a activity to do, right? Like a, a session minus one or, or maybe just after session zero, 0 0.5, right? You've all sat down, you did your cats, you've talked safety tools, you decide what you're playing. Everyone's got an enthusiastic consent. Then you all get together next week and you play land versus sea. Now, if you got like a six player group, you might want to modify the rules. So it's, you're not playing by the full rules of the game because Though I personally would be really tempted with a group of four to play with the rules and give the players who won some kind of advantage, whether it's a narrative control or they get to pick where their home base is or something. That's what I'd be willing to do. Absolutely. And 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 there's certainly a plenty of games out there that use this sort of map game mechanic. Uh, Catan, of course, being one that mm -hmm. I think everyone is, is going to be familiar with. Uh, but even games like Carcassonne, could be, yeah. you know, building out uh, a, an area. They wouldn't be the full world, world map, but they would no. be a region. Uh, and any time you're putting down uh, tiles of some sort with land masses on them, even King Domino, Queen Domino, you know, yep. you've got ways to build out your maps uh, varying in size from worlds to cities to, you know, regions. Even like going in, we're talking role-playing, it's not necessarily fantasy, but even like Twilight Imperium. There's no reason you couldn't set up your game with Twilight Imperium and then use that as your map. Though, again, uh, I'm going to recommend Eclipse over Twilight Imperium because Twilight Imperium, the map set at the beginning of the game, and it's always the same size. It's always whatever, four or five rings of hexes. Whereas Eclipse, while you're playing, you actually expand out and go different ways and you end up putting warp portals and stuff on. So I would strongly recommend, actually, if you were going to play a game of Traveler or something and you don't want to play in the established universe, because I know every square inch of traveler has been mapped because i've seen the maps on google maps and stuff like that but if you if you want to play traveler in your own world it would be an awesome way to do it or even star wars is to sit there and do it out and then just rename the planet so they're star wars planets i mean you could even do something if you were playing an open sandbox type sci-fi game mm -hmm. uh zaya would work yeah, zaya legend of your drift system <laughs> zaya legend of your drift system could be your entire pre-campaign what happened because that game is all about exploring the galaxy playing a, a a spacer and doing whatever the heck you want that would be it. like playing a game of zaya could be a really interesting way to create your like character backstory or even your setting backstory for where everything is and like oh do you remember in bc 2832 when the cops catch the freighter who was going across the way and he almost got through and tried to get into the planet but crashed into the planetary shield and I could totally see it in Zaya. I hadn't even considered Zaya. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like you could probably play Zaya and make it a role playing game too. Yeah, more than likely. Just, yeah, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> just start role playing between, while you play between Zaya. turns. Just role play out the 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 <laughs> sort of uh, extra bits outside the game. Yeah, definitely for map making. Um, and and similarly, without there's no reason you can't take and use board game maps and role playing games. This is something I have done for years. 
whether that's you take your Zoom Haven scenario book and use the dungeons in there in a fantasy game, or just using the tiles to make your own. I have stolen Gloomhaven map tiles. I have stolen boards from games. I use the um, the star map for the very short lived. I'm trying to forget uh, the battleship sci fi version. Oh, what is it called? It's Battleship Galaxies. Battleship Galaxies is a really good version of Battleship that was about um, fleet battles that sadly only would have worked if they kept putting out expansion. So it kind of de- died on the vine. But it has a hex map. And what they did is they put a bit of white space around each hex. And what that's great for is all those like Starfleet battleships and that that don't actually fit in hexes next to each other. It gives you enough room to fit stuff. And so we use those with the um, pre-painted Star Wars miniature game figures with those because the ships kind of over go a little big. So like I steal that map. Stealing maps from board games is something I have definitely done. What I haven't done though, is I've always done it with a tactical game. So I have taken a tactical grid or a tactical map or a tactical hex map and then use that in a role-playing game. What I've not done is say, taken the map from Mombasa and use that to be a map of Africa in a game or something like that. I'm trying to think of examples. Or using the map for say, um, Arkham Horror or Eldritch Horror or any of those adventure style games and used it. Or we've talked on the show many times about um, Android Netrunner, but net, just Android, the board game, and how it's got this very Philip K. Dick sci-fi world with a space elevator and everything like that. I could totally see just going, here's our setting for a role-playing game, and then using the standees to show where everyone is and not playing the board game. So again, I think that's a board game you could play to establish your backstory for a role-playing game. No, absolutely. And I mean, there's also some sort of... Uh games out there that already kind of uh sort of cross the line i'm looking behind you and i see man of war and there is the warhammer our uh uh battles rpg or a board game um which i don't see behind you right now but the 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 one with that was the world of warhammer where you used between mighty empires mighty empires yeah which was a board game that literally is what we were talking about (laughs) the games workshop got this idea yeah yeah, is is, is let's play a board game to give us a background for playing warhammer fantasy battle right definitely that um the other thing of course you can do is steal bits right steal things from board games to use in role-playing games i kind of mentioned this above um in the comments section that whenever I play anything with dungeon tiles, I steal liberally from every other dungeon game I own. And I'm using D&D pre-painted miniatures from when it was a skirmish game. And I'm using uh, Gloomhaven treasure tiles. And I'm using Hero Quest scenery from the original version and now the new version with even more scenery. And I'm using stuff from Mage Knight dungeons for treasure chests because they're nice in 3D. And I'm using overlays that came in a Pathfinder comic book that showed you like a beach scene, you know, like, and it all just ends up together on my table. When I run Star Trek or Star Wars games, whenever I use Star Wars games, my ships come from X-Wing, Star Wars X-Wing from Fantasy Flight. And then my character models come from Star Wars Imperial Assault. I'm just literally taking the miniatures out of one game and using them in another one. And in the Kickstarter driven mini game, heavy Mm. world we live in right now, There's no reason why if you have backed some of these mini heavy Kickstarter games, you don't have a whole world of minis to pull from Mm -hmm. for your bad guys, your good guys, your NPCs, your characters, whatever. Uh, There's so much miniature content out there right now. I mean, we are in a world I never could have imagined back when I was thinking about collecting miniatures and and back in the days with, you know, early Warhammer uh, armies that you know everyone was creating their own everything and now Mm -hmm. i mean it's just a glut if you want it it's out there and one of the big ones you're mentioning the the what we used to have to to make it all our own scenery like back in the day scenery was intensive difficult work although i enjoyed it now i can get any pretty much any scenery i want 3d printed by someone at a very reasonable price let alone the number of companies that do paper and 3d scenery like fat dragon games came out of from doing paper scenery that was flat on a map to 3d scenery to fold flat 3d scenery which i love because then you can put it away to now they are one of the biggest companies in fantasy 3d printed stl files 
They're the ones that invented the dragon lock system that's now open source and everyone uses to attach all theirs together. That comes all from Fat Dragon. And I'm like, I watched this company grow from, you know, bad, like, oh, bad 2D maps to like, 3d dungeons to like amazing 3d printed stuff it's amazing i mean when we started our scenery was the sort of the leftover bits and pieces from railroad uh mm -hmm. you know all the all the hobby railroad people that was yes. that was where a lot of the battle scenery st uh started from was hobby railroad uh scenery because that's so, what there was so much lichen on all of my game <laughs> tables so much like it so much like and then little yep. plastic trees yep. with lichen tops yep we had tons of it and well heck when we used to play warhammer we used cardboard the hills were cardboard cut out rings to show elevations right absolutely of course that was also back when you keep the book came with an army in the back that you cut out of the back of the book and you use chits so things have definitely changed that way as well indeed um, let me think. What else we got? What other uh, ways well, we can use board games? So, so like just some interesting ones, like way out there, right? I, th I think the big thing here is be creative, think outside the box. I'm just saying, I want to play a sci-fi game, which starts with me playing a game of Galaxy Trucker, and then using the awards. So at the end, I can like have those as badges of honor on my character, and then go, okay, I've now made enough money to buy my first ship. And now you start your traveler campaign or you start your white star campaign or whatever sci-fi thing. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I used to haul pipes because that's literally in Galaxy Trucker. You're moving sanitary pipes. That's the backstory for Galaxy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I used to haul pipes. Now I uh, now I'm doing this. We're, we're saving the galaxy. So I want to go. I want to I want to go in the other direction. So you're talking yeah. about let's take this Galaxy Trucker and we'll make it into an RPG. When I started out. I would raid the board games for dice because I didn't mm. have dice. I wasn't an RPGer, True. and at the time, now granted, it's a lot easier to get dice than it ever was back then. Uh, back then, but there's no reason that if you need a few d6 to go roll up a D and D character, you can't just go steal them from your family's copy of Payday and Monopoly until yep. you can buy your own set. You know, there's no reason you can't reuse all those components. So well, nowadays, you could probably get a full D and D set from a relatively reasonably sized board game collection yeah, absolutely uh like you just you get your d4s from kemet you get your d6s from everywhere you get your d8s from i don't know I, now now i'm telling that <laughs> best games to steal dice from could be a topic that, that might be a put a pin in it for later uh another one is cash right uh, we're not we're not going to talk about the evils of paper money but there are so many board games out there now with great monetary in the you know whether it be, be chip whether it be clays or metal or whatever you have you mm -hmm. there's a great way to have piles of cash in you because there are some times where you don't want to be you want to be ma managing the economy in a game in an rpg but you don't want to be writing down and scratching out numbers constantly so just keep yeah. a little pile of gold in front of your character sheet it's a really easy way to do it and often makes more sense than writing down the number of gold and silver on your character sheet which leads me to props grab miniatures from another game or a weird board game component or little pieces of gold or whatever and use them for your characters find this and you're like what the heck is that i'm like oh it's the first player token from dinosaur island you know what, what the heck is this thing it's actually a slap bracelet so i'm thinking cyberpunk game at that point but whatever <laughs> what i want to know though before we before we, we kind of rambling a bit getting back to math guy dave's questions can you think of games to start a role-playing game where you would play the board game and then go from there to playing a role-playing game. I mean, honestly, it, it really depends on the role-playing game. I mean, if you really wanted to do something and you were looking for a modern RPG where you were going to be, you know, playing in, a, in, a, in modern day cities and there was a strong, you could make Monopoly work. You know, you could that's, each start that's a off. Rough. You can Who each, owns each yeah, street? You, you've there got, you, go. you know, the, your your relative wealth and you know how much uh, income you've got. You could make it work. I probably wouldn't play the full game because, again, it's Monopoly. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, just a way to establish levels of uh, economic wealth between characters. You could make Monopoly work. Uh, the game of determine life. Determine your starting money. The game of life. Uh, you know, who ends up uh, better off on the path? I mean, look, Traveler and the Game of Life. Their character creation paths aren't that different. <laughs> That's what happens when I give Sean no script. We we get. I'm waiting for the how you tie Candyland into a role playing game. I'm not gonna push that. I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> not, I'm not going gonna go that, that far. far. 
Um, but there's, so here's there. one I thought I mean, of. There's a lot of so um, here's one I thought. Tom Vassell's game, nothing personal, is all about reestablishing dominance in a mob, right? And you literally end up building, by the end of the game, uh, a, a hierarchy, a mob hierarchy. And it's all about getting your people up into the boss and like trying to be, you know, you get points for how, how high up your people are. It would be really cool to play a game of that and then that make that the mob in your game, what, whether you're mob members or you're the cops trying to crack them, whatever, but just a way to establish the mob hierarchy. You end up with images of every NPC or player. Again, you could go either way. I think that would be really cool. In similar fantasy, there is a board game called, uh, oh, I'm going to forget the name, Warband Against the Darkness. There it is. That is a game where you are trying to build the best warband of fantasy monsters to take out the good guys who are off board. And it's all about vying for power and trying to become the warband leader and controlling more units than your opponents. And again, that seems like a really cool way that like, you know, we're going to get together next weekend. Instead of role playing, we're going to play warband against the darkness. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, Dave's not going to make it. So we're just going to play this. All right. And then the next session, the, the DM comes in and you're like, oh, you see the fires of Rohan lit. You're like, what? Someone is invading and it ends up being the warband. I just think that would be really cool. No, Absolutely. Uh, and I mean, you know, you could, uh, uh, there's so many, so many options. Look at, I mean, look at Gloomhaven, you're building a city. And once you're, once your city's the done and everything, oh, yeah, you've, you've got your own custom city to, to play with in your RPG that no one else will have the same city uh, in theory. Yeah. Pretty much any of those games, right? Like pandemic, play a game in a pandemic legacy. I would probably play legacy for this. If you played through pandemic legacy, set your next zombie apocalypse game on that map, on that board with what happened. You know, uh, you'd have to play the game to know what happened. <laughs> or, or similarly, we're playing through Charterstone right now where you just finished game eight and playing through Charterstone using that charter, your six different charters as here's your fantasy city. Here's the shops that are there. Yes, you can go there to buy cat familiars. And yeah, that old iron mine over there is haunted by ghosts. But if you give them a donation, the ghost will follow and help you out. Like you could totally do a fantasy city out of a Charterstone game. So I do get to ask, why, is Isaac going to do a role-playing game? Because he should. Like he has a fantastic world in Gloomhaven. So it's, a, it's a, even more grimdark than Warhammer. That is a, a disturbing world. But the fact that he didn't go with standard orcs dwell, dwarf, 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 yeah, we're just going to mash all those fantasy <laughs> races together. Orcs, dwarves, and elves is what I was trying to say. You know, he's got all his inox and his, um, I can't even remember all the races in that game, the 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 vermlings, which, yeah, okay, they're a little scaven-like, but he's got the, the weird bee-like people. I don't even remember what they're called. Quatrils, that's it. He came up with a totally new world, and it just feels like it's being underused. Right. Yeah, no, I I mean, he's putting out enough games of it. So, I mean, you still got to get uh, the ice one out of the way. And uh... plus that rule book. Come on. That, that is basically a role playing <laughs> game rule book. He's halfway there. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Um, what else have we got? I mean, there's there's talk. You could you you could you look at also use games like magic as your magical system, magic system. I, uh, I, there were back in the day people who tried this. Yeah, no, absolutely. There were definitely I remember people trying this at the Windsor Gaming Society. And I mean, and speaking of that, I got so ripped off on magic because that's how it was sold to me. Someone was like, this is Dungeons and Dragons played with a deck of cards. You're playing a wizard and these are all your spells and you're doing this, but like totally sold it as a role playing game. I read the rules. I'm like, this isn't a flipping role playing. There's no <laughs> role playing here at all. The only role playing is making fun of my opponent. If I win, like <laughs> there's no role playing here. So shame on you, whatever game store you were called in Livonia, Michigan that <laughs> sold me those. I can picture where it was. I don't remember what it was called. Place about all my TSR Marvel stuff when I got back into it. So now I, I realize we're flipping the question around completely. Unless you got more. Um, can you think of any role-playing games that would lead you into a board game? Uh, role -playing the only thing I can think of is playing as your characters in a board game. Like if yeah. you're playing D and D, you somehow create your D and D characters in Gloomhaven. Yep. Right. Like you just pick the the character class that's closest to whatever you play in D and D, or you know you're playing Imperial Assault and you're playing Star Wars. You're going to pick a character. You know you're going to play the Jedi or the Smuggler or whatever. I could see that, but I can't think of many that would really enhance the board game experience. Yeah. I mean, um, 
No, nothing really comes to mind because the problem the problem you run into, of course, is that there's so much more detail in an RPG character that yeah. is stripped away when you go into a board game. I mean, you could take your characters and, uh, you know, Dyson in the chat room already mentioned uh, playing D&D in the Cluedo Mansion. Well, you could yep. play, you could take your characters and play Clue, but to play Clue, you would have to strip out so much of what your character is or add so much more into the game of Clue. Right. Uh, you've you've got to, one way or the other, um, there's, there's no sort of uh, easy way to, to merge those together. All right, we're going we're gonna to segue to something that's not even happening next. I honestly think you could do it with Tales from the Loop that we're going to review later today because the characters have all the stats. I think you might be able to play your Tales from the Loop, the role-playing game character in the Tales from the Loop board game without any modification. You might have to pick a different special item from the deck. Like you'd be limited, even then you might be able to make up your own version, but that takes a little bit more creativity. But I would think you could go through that item deck and pick the thing that's closest to your personal item. There's enough range there. It's got the same six stats, only two matter. So you're going to pick your highest stat and your lowest. Right. I no, honestly think that might work. That's fair. That's that's absolutely fair because again, that is a direct translation. Yes. Unlike something like where Clue, the Clue in D and D, where where the characters are completely you know developed in one side and just a name and a picture on the other side. Uh, these in in Tales from the Loop, the character is the character. Yes, you've yeah. eliminated a couple of stats, but the the meat of it is all still there. Right. I I honestly think it'll work, which is what made me think think about this. If there were any others. Now, what I do wonder is there is Clue Dungeons and Dragons that came out when 3.0 was released. I wonder if that has anything actually tied to D&D besides a bunch of D&D themed rooms and items. Right. Now, one of the things I know people have played Dungeon, the, the classic Dungeon with an exclamation point TSR game with their D&D characters, but they had to play Dungeon and I feel sorry for them because Dungeon is not a very good game. And there's another game where I stole the map. I have totally used the dungeon map in a DD game completely used it now where you get into more of this overlap would be as if you use dungeon to generate your random encounters for a role-playing game and that could be kind of cool I, I honestly don't know if it works from what i remember of dungeon is you end up finding like beholders right at the beginning which would be terrible for first level characters though if you're playing old school i guess it's all part of the game and you run away but i don't remember a lot of you know kobolds and goblins in the decks for dungeon Oh, I do remember there were different decks at different levels. So, mm. but yeah, no reason not to do what they've asked, right? Uh, using a tile A game to start an RPG, why not? Use Carcassonne to to build your your countryside, especially like something like Cark. You're getting you're getting cities, you're getting farms, you're getting those wayside inns. If you've got the inns and cathedrals expansion, you're getting the chapels. Like you're you're actually getting quite a bit of your standard tropes of fan of fantasy right there out of a game of cart um the idea of using a game to set up your economy is fascinating um if it, it, we're going to bring up an obscure one that i reviewed a while ago shafosa shafosa is a fantasy economic game you could totally play a game of shafosa and then you got a couple things that happen with that. For one, you end up with a map of all these different kingdoms that you could use that show like how many different types of resource production buildings they have. Plus, you could set the starting economy in your game. And you could look at it and go, you know what? Gold was worth nothing by the end because everyone had it, but wood is really rare in this world. And I could totally see playing a game of Shafosa to do it. But again, you got to play a game of Shafosa, and that's not one of the most popular games out there. But if you're into that type of... Um, Economic for similitude. If you're looking for a simulationist game, if you want to do GURPS fantasy, you might want to play Shafosa first. Here's one. Uh, if, as a as a sort of uh, interesting, is it even technically playing a board game in the middle of an RPG? But if you're playing uh, Aliens or something of that nature, uh, and it's time to fight in the ship, do you break out a copy of Space Hulk and just play a board mm -hmm. game? because uh, i mean there, there's no reason nemesis. there's no reason you can't rpg your characters uh and on top of that um you know there's it's and it's just a matter of you know the, the game is is there to really play out your strategies um and here's now what, what i've what i found with that is is it doesn't actually work because as soon as someone fails in the game like well my character would have been better 
Like, especially Space Hulk, right? It's these six rolls, and you only hit on a six. And then if you shoot multiple shots, then you hit on a five, a four, a three, a two, a one. And like, they'd be like, no, I have a 98 weapon skill. There's no way I would, that's what's happened anytime I've tried that. So I've specifically done it with the Warhammer games. What I would totally do, though, is break out Space Hulk for the map and minis. Right. And the blips, like the blip system, I would totally use all that, but then I'd still stick to RPG rules. Like your character would still have all your character abilities and their weapons, and they'd be rolling whatever dice the role playing system uses, not the dice from Space Hulk. Right. And so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of drift a little bit here. We're on similar topics, but uh, and and this is and, and I know I'm 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 taking a, I'm, I'm definitely taking a, a crack at you on this one, but mm -hmm. a lot of people will say, 4E was a board game, yep. not an RPG. Uh, so you know when does a game become an RPG versus a board game is Gloomhaven an RPG. It's not a board game already. You know, there, you, there you are ask. people that will argue it. The, my whole thing in any of those is um, trying to think of a, a, a polite, <laughs> we're not explicit <laughs> yet way to say it, but um, can I go lick the door and then, I don't know, slap the guard in the face with a fish and then go to the washroom in the corner in the board game. And if I can't, then it's not a role playing game. So the question I have for, for that, exactly that is, you can, but there's no rules that mechanically throw anything. So go ahead and say you do it. And, and you walk over to the corner and you say you take a leak. Fine, you're wasting your turn because there's no, taking a leak has no mechanical uh, equivalent in the game other than wasting time basically. So uh, sure. it depends on the game. If you have to walk across the room, it might take movement points. Like, it really depends on the game. Well, I know, absolutely. But, but, but it's, it's the whole example. free will thing. Can, yeah. can I, instead of completing the adventure and doing the thing, instead we betray the king and we keep the money. Like all of that. Like it's all stuff that depending on the board game you're playing, there, there's certain things. Like I'm going to play Monopoly, but you know what? I'm going to, I want to half the rent on all my buildings. Right. And like, there's no rule for I'm going to charge less rent for this place. Or if this person lands here, I'm not going to charge them. I'm like, you're going to get some really upset people playing Monopoly if you start playing that way. It's it's the free will. Board games, the whole thing is is board games are, um, I'm going to forget the two terms. Jeff Seuss explained this well. He used better terms than I did. But like, basically, board games tell you what you can't do, where role playing games tell you what you can do. Or sorry, the other way around. Role playing games tell you what you can't do because there are some limitations. Whereas board games are very structured and here are the only things you can do. Right. I, again, I'm wording it wrong, but like, that's the difference is, is one, one. And, and while there's the whole, you win, you lose thing. It's interesting. Cause like one of the, you know, I, I was, I was reading up a little bit on this and just sort of getting some, getting some people's takes on it. And one person's was, Oh, it's a board game. Or uh, it's a, it's an RPG. If the monsters can open the door before you. And I'm like, and, and, and the response is space Hulk. They can. Yeah, in some games they can. Yeah. In some games they can. Uh, but again, then that's and that's just sort of you know what but is yeah, yeah, a better will... example is I convinced the monster to join our side. Right. There, the, I don't. I can't think of a single dungeon crawling board game I've ever played where I can do that. Right. And where, but I mean, at I the same time, talk. I, I want to sneak past the guards instead of attacking them. I, yeah. Again, no. Sneak, see, sneak, to me, crawl. sneaking is a better is a better example. Yeah, because there's no there's a lot of fantasy monsters or a lot of fantasy GMs who would say, "Well, you can't talk to them; they're a monster. You can't you can't convince them to do anything uh, right or wrong." I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, I'm, not, say. I'm not supporting that argument. But there's a lot of GMs out there who will go with the whole "you can't convince an alien creature to like you." Um, Maybe aliens, but yeah. I, we're not going to get into the orcs are evil no argument because that's kind of where that goes no nope, but absolutely. like sneak whatever you know what i mean though is is the whole i i bake him a pie and i i feed the dog i i feed the hellhound i throw him a piece of meat like any of that right that's the kind of stuff that like i've yet to see a board game that, en that encompasses the ability to do all of that right without just saying no you can't do that because well that's what board games are about is there we'll get a whole book that tells you what you can do and if it's not in there you can't do it Whereas a role playing game goes, here's what you can't do. Other than that, go wild. Right. And here's the the basic rule you use whenever you come up with something that's not in here. Yep. All right. Um... All right. We kind of went off on a bit of a tangent there. <laughs> um, I'm going to remove the battery from before it blows up. Additional mapping games. I'm trying to think of uh, what are there. I, I was just trying to think. There's got to be like I've definitely swapped role playing games. Like I've been running. I've I've run a game of Warhammer 
where there was a point where the players were about to attack a pirate ship and it was going to be this super high action combat. And we actually switched over to Feng Shui from Robin Laws just to play out that combat and then switch back to role play Warhammer when we got back into the intrigue and everything. It worked great. It was awesome. Like that's an example, but that's a role-playing game to a role-playing game. Right. Now, another thing that I here's something I hadn't mentioned, I forgot about. Playing a board game in the middle of a role-playing game, I've done it. They exist. Wizards of the Coast has put out at least three different card games that are meant to be played in the middle of a D&D section. session. Like, your characters go to the Green Dragon Inn, you sit down, and you get into a rousing game of Three Dragon Ante. And then the DM grabs it and throws Three Dragon Ante down on the table, and you all shuffle and play Three Dragon Ante, and you're playing for your character's real gold or whatever. And there are multiple games. Great Dal Moody is the latest version they put out, but there's another one that I'm trying to... Uh, Fistful of Dragon Stones is another one. Uh, Three Dragon Ante is the one that I remember even had rules for D&D in it, where like if your character's stats were higher, you could do something with your hand. That was really integrated. So I always thought that was fascinating. Now, I know it's not quite what Dave's talking about, but it is definitely an overlap. Now, what I've never done has been in the middle of a board game saying, no, wait, we got to roll up characters and play through this encounter. Like, I don't know, you're playing Zaya and you're both fighting over the planet and you decide, oh no, that's it. We need to see what really happened in this battle. And then you go play a role-playing game. I guess it could happen. I think the closest would be that Mighty Empires where, you know, you're playing out abstract on an overland map and when the battles happen, you play Warhammer Fantasy Battle. But again, that's not playing a role-playing game. That's playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Right. Um, I think what else we got? Uh, Delve is a dungeon dungeon building game that could possibly get be used for uh, building out your dungeon maps in advance. Um, playing I could totally see like building an adventure playing by playing a board game yep. or porting one. Like the, I, I, there's no reason. If you own a copy of Imperial Assault, you couldn't totally go through the campaign book and kind of port some of that into your Edge of Empire game. You're already going to have the maps and the minis. They give you a good setup on what's happening and why these things are happening. Um, then there's also like the, there's the in-between games too. The game specifically made to set up a role-playing game. So Kingdom, Microscope, and I know there are others out there. Yep. Uh, we've talked about using For the Queen. I don't really consider those board games. I consider those pure RPGs, but then people are like, well, they're not RPGs because you're just world building. And I'm like, they're not really board games either, right? That's why I call them the in-between games. Um, also city building and a lot of Powered by the Apocalypse style games would also be similar to this. But it, oh, here's one I hadn't thought of is, I don't know where it stands now. So Phil Vecchione, DNA Phil's Hydro Hacker Operatives, H2O role-playing game, his Hydro Hack, at one time was a card game, um, oddly based on the card game Guillotine. And it was all about how much water you were allowed to hack. And he had it as purely narrative, powered by the apocalypse, and felt it didn't feel like enough like a hack. Then he had it pure board game, and he felt it was too much. And then he kind of settled on this card game, but he still felt like you were playing a different game. Like he said, if I ever do it in the role-playing game, I, I, I have a cliffhanger, so we end on the hack. And then we play the hack out with the people involved in the hack. And then we resume the role-playing game another week. So that because it feels so disconnected, but that was an example where you would literally stop role-playing, played a board game, then went back to role-playing based on, and things changed based on the results of the board game. But it was a very proprietary fill only kind of thing. Right. Uh, another map game, well, talking, you know, talking earlier about tile place and games and, and back to the original, you know, <laughs> build, use a map to build uh, a world uh Cusco, or which is a re-implementation of java not only builds the map but it actually builds levels so you're actually mm. building up stacking tiles to build mountainous terrain on top Ooh. of laying out your lakes and your and your valleys and everything else um so that's Cusco, or uh which is a re-implementation of java Ah, uh, when i played all right i think we probably kind of not beating this into the ground, but kind of ran around in circles enough time that I'm feeling a little, a little dizzy. Unless you got something else to throw in there. Uh, summarize, yes. <laughs> play a board game. Use the, use the results in your role-playing game. Heck, have your character. Play, play your game of Catan in character and then start up on the end and use what happened in your game of Catan as backstory. Like, you remember when your empire built that road across my path and stopped us from getting into the forest? Go for it, do it, and then tell us about it 
in the comments below, send me an email, mo at tabletopbellop.com. I, I want to hear about it if you do that, especially if you use Sean's Monopoly or uh, <laughs> Game of Life Life Pass system. If you, yeah, if make you can use basic Hasbro family night games as part of your RPG experience, yeah. let us know. I, I want to use Game of Life for like the startup of like a Dresden Files game. Or, or or um changing the dreaming right something where there's like the veil right like it's just it's your normal world here's your normal life and at this point that's when you found out fairies are real there you go well that's it for our thoughts on using board games along with rpgs now we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions if you got a question for us head over to the website click on ask the bellhop or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com